So it should be starting to record now. Here we go, we're live. <laughs> so we're with Lindsay, who's the head of Doing Deg Primary, and Kevin Hengoid. Yep. And I've just been chatting with Lindsay, and she's been telling me about a cross curricular health and wellbeing project just to bring to life and some best practice that's going on in schools. So, Lindsay, can you just tell me a little bit more about your project you've got in school? Yep. So we're currently involved with an Erasmus project, which is uh, involved, in with, involved with other countries in Europe. So there's three schools in Wales, three schools in Greece and three schools in Spain. Uh, we're all linked together then for, for the three year project focusing on health and well-being. So the project is called Active Schools and it's all around encouraging children to be more active and to make good choices in the foods that they eat and the, and the way they live their lives and to look after their body and to look after their minds. Um, so there's five outputs from the project and they're all cross-curricular. There are so many skills coming from the LNF skills, DCF skills. There are so many skills that, it, that the children will get out of it. So the first output is all about um, active schools in the classroom. So they'll be looking at how we can engage families and work with families for them to understand their, their active lifestyle. So there'll be a lot of oracy work for the children in that and presenting to different audiences. And then the second part of the project, the second output is Active Schools Campaign. So that will be led by the children um, and there will be lots of leaflets, again, lots of presentations, lots of video making. So, so many skills coming through there, um, IT skills, literacy skills and oracy. A lot of our children need a lot of oracy um, development. So we're going to really focus on how we can build opportunities for children to present into it. And then the third part then is Active Schools Cookbook. And a lot of that will be around um, sort of looking at traditional recipes from the three countries and developing a cookbook. So again, lots of literacy skills involved with that. But they're also going to be involved with a nutritionist where they will look at the nutritional value of the foods and the recipes that they've created. So the fat content and the carbohydrate content and so on and so forth. So again, they'll get lots of maths out of that, lots of science out of that. So it's really hitting a lot of a lot of different skills and a lot of areas of learning and experience. And then we've also got an app that we're looking at that will link with children's Fitbits. And they are, <laughs> so the app then will involve their DCF skills. And, you know, again, build, they'll support with building the app. So they'll develop lots of skills through that. And then the last one is a health routes and activities toolkit um, where they'll be looking at um, setting up a toolkit that other schools can use and families can use all around health and wellbeing. So in terms of all the thinking of the AOLEs, we're hitting lots because there's the health and well-being, obviously, which is the main one. We've got science and technology, literacy, there's maths coming out of it. There'd be lots of opportunities for creativity and expressive arts, and then lots of opportunities as well for humanity. So through the app, they're going to look at map work and um, it'll be the app will sort of track their routes and different things within the local area. So they'll have the opportunity to look at their humanity skills in terms of geography. Uh, and building in skills there as well and also and the data gonna... from the Fitbits as well that's that's yeah. amazing yeah so the so they're going to all have a Fitbit um, and we've been given funding to to buy the children a Fitbit each for one class wow. and we're also going to involve them in buying them and looking at value for money and looking at where we should buy them from and reading reviews and things like that so they're going to be involved in in purchasing the the Fitbits so we're going to get the maths element out to that then and and how much it's going to cost and things. So yeah, massively cross curricular and ticks ticks every box. And we were talking about that the Jerusalem, the yes, I can't even say it. The step, no, the I, dance off. You're going to see my dog. <laughs> Tell us all that. Yeah, we call it the dance off. So <laughs> Spanish, so Spanish schools have been involved with an active schools project for four years. So they are well on their way, and they've just completed a challenge called the Jerusalem challenge. We'll say <laughs> where all the schools have learned the same steps to a dance to the same song. And they've all videoed themselves dancing and then put it all together. So they're all effectively dancing together and it's lovely. So the Spanish schools have set us a challenge for that now. So the nine schools involved in the, in the project across the three countries will all learn the different steps to the dance. And then we'll all put it together as a video for the, for the nine schools. So lots of activity there. And staff oh, to get involved really? as well. You can get involved, Nick, if you want oh, to. <laughs> you do not want to see that. <laughs> but that's what I definitely want to share with our students is just... I provided some examples of cross-curricular projects going on health and well-being, but this really brings it to life because this is what you're doing in your school. So yeah, that's, is, that's, yeah. that's brilliant. We're very excited. And then outside of that, because as well as thinking about our curriculum, we think a lot about our school curriculum and what opportunities we provide for our children, you know, outside of their learning and outside of their lessons. 
And for our children to have the opportunity to travel abroad is going to be absolutely huge. And there's so many skills that will come out of that, just life skills, you know, things that, that are not necessarily on the curriculum. And, and the four purposes, you know, coming through there, they, there's so many opportunities for them to, to develop their four purposes um, throughout it all. So, yeah, really, really excited. Oh, definitely. And we're linking with a school in Rwanda in a few weeks' time, but it just brings it just the, the whole learning to life. Yeah. Just when they have like these authentic communication and interaction with people and children from different places, it's just so much yeah. more, so much better than reading about it in a book. Yes, yeah, because it's real, isn't it? It's real life. It's purposeful and it's it's real life, and it's opportunities that the children might not get, you know, from home. So to provide them for, from school is, um, yeah, we're really lucky to be a part of it. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that with us. No problem. I want to try and turn this off without. I cut you off. Oh, <laughs> Stop.